Hi everyone, and welcome back to the eighth video of the Old Testament survey course. In the last section, we gave an organizing framework of the Old Testament history, and in this section, we're going to do the same for the literature of the Old Testament itself. That is, we're going to look at the organization of the Old Testament books. Now, the Old Testament is actually a library of 39 separate books, but these books can be grouped together in common categories to help us get a sense of the whole. Now, historically, there have been two different ways to categorize the Old Testament books. The Hebrew Bible, the Bible that the Jews of Jesus' day and modern Jews use, it has the same books as the English Old Testament that you and I read, but it has them in a different order and arrangement. The Hebrew divisions can actually be seen in the way that Jesus describes the Old Testament. We see in Luke chapter 24, verse 44, Jesus said, This is what I told you while I was still with you. Everything must be fulfilled that is written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms. Now, in this verse, Jesus mentions the three categories of the Hebrew Bible. First is the law of Moses. This is also called the Torah. Torah means law or instruction. It's also called the Pentateuch, which means five scrolls. It's also called the five books of Moses. These are the first five books of the Old Testament. And next is the prophets. In the Hebrew Old Testament, this group is divided into two subcategories. The first is the former prophets, which are all the history books like Joshua, Samuel, Kings, etc. And then the, the later prophets, which are the writing prophets like Isaiah, Jeremiah, Hosea, Amos, etc. Then the third category in the Hebrew Bible is called the writings. Now, this is sometimes called the Psalms because the book of Psalms is the most prominent book in this collection. But this category also has wisdom books such as Proverbs and Job and miscellaneous books such as Lamentations and the book of Ruth. Now, this is how the Old Testament literature is organized in the Hebrew Bible, but we're going to concentrate on the divisions in the English Old Testament that we use all the time. Now, like I said, this has the same books, just in a slightly different order and organized in a different way. Now, the first division is the same, the law, also known as the Torah or the Pentateuch, which contains the five books of Moses. Then the second division is the historical books. These books, like the name says, are primarily telling the history of Israel, continuing from where the Torah ended until the end of the Old Testament history. Then the third division is called the Poetic Books. And these books are the Psalms, the Book of Praise, and then the Wisdom Books. And then the last division is the Prophets. And in the English Bible, the Prophets are subdivided into two groups called the Major Prophets and the Minor Prophets. Now, don't let these terms confuse you. Major and Minor have nothing to do with their importance or influence because every prophetic book is very important. But the terms major and minor refer to the relative size, the relative length of the books. The major prophets are just longer books, and the minor prophets are shorter books, as we'll see. And that's all that these terms major and minor mean. Now let's go through and list the books in each division. The books of the Torah are Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. The historical books are Joshua, Judges, Ruth, 1st and 2nd Samuel, 1st and 2nd Kings, 1st and 2nd Chronicles, Ezra, Nehemiah, and Esther. And the poetic books are Job, Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, and Song of Songs. The major prophets are Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentations, Ezekiel, and Daniel. And the minor prophets are Hosea, Joel, Amos, Obadiah, Jonah, Micah, Nahum, Habakkuk, Zephaniah, Haggai, Zechariah, and Malachi. These are all the books of the Old Testament in their respective divisions. Now, here's a chart that I found helpful to organize and memorize the Old Testament uh, books. Notice that some of the historical books naturally go together in pairs. 
Feel free to use this chart to help you memorize the Old Testament books if you find it helpful, and also feel free to ignore it if you don't find it helpful. So now let's try to make a connection between the literature you've just learned and the history which you learned in the last section. In other words, let's examine how these books are related to their history, the chronological organization of the books. That is, what is the connection between the five epochs of history and these four divisions of the Old Testament? Well, first, the books of Genesis through 2 Kings are one continuous historical narrative that tells the, the history of epochs one through four, that is, the prehistory through the monarchy. And then the books of Chronicles retell much of the history, roughly the same period as Samuel and Kings it overlaps, but then it continues into the exile, and then Ezra, Nehemiah, and Esther cover the exile and the return. So the secondary telling of the history covers epics four and five, the monarchy and the exile return. And then the poetic books and the prophets, each book is distributed in different places throughout the historical epics. And a few of them don't have precise dating. We don't know for sure. But the prophets, they're mostly clustered around a few crisis points in Israel's history. Now, we'll look at the historical placement of each book in more detail when we study that particular book. But for now, let's review the four divisions of the English Old Testament books. And they are the law, the historical books, the poetic books, and the prophets. And then remember, the prophets are divided into major prophets and minor prophets depending on the length of each book. Now, hopefully, this provides you an organizing framework to understand the literature, the books of the Old Testament, and helps you see the grouping characteristics of each book. Now, in the next section, we'll look more closely at the common characteristics of the first group, the five books of Moses. Until then, thanks for watching.